Hey folks, David Stewart here. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Let's talk a little bit more about baby boomers. These videos always do good, but today it's the good boomers. The good baby boomers. Actually, most baby boomers were good. I made this point on a couple of other videos, but um, what we end up judging the whole generation by tends to be the things that they did collectively, like politically uh, being bad, and as, as well as like a lot of anecdotes. Um, there might be a higher than average amount of sociopathy in that generation. And in fact, uh, someone on Twitter showed me this graph and it's like, here's serial killers. And they like peak in like the 80s and then they go down. It's like, what explains this? It's like, this is just boomers becoming adults and then aging out of being serial killers and doing something else, right? So the serial killers were all baby boomers. So yes, a little bit higher than average amount of sociopaths just means that um, you're going to end up having one of those boomer stories and you're going to have that, those small tail end kind of people are going to have a big impact on what's happening culturally and especially politically. Now, on the flip side of that is that I think the boomers produced a lot of tail end people that were uh, really exceptional. And the areas of boomer exceptionalism really are artistic. Contrary to what boomers will tell you about the Beatles being great and the movie, the, you know, the stuff from the late 60s being great, which were mostly silent generation musicians playing music that baby boomers bought. The baby boomers have been like the biggest consumer block uh, to really arise out of the American system. The first like popular music consumer block of, of like young listeners were the baby boomers. But they, as musicians, really did a lot of innovative things. And in fact, the I think the era of the baby boomer musician really starts around 1970. It doesn't end until you get to the 1990s. It doesn't end until stuff like Nirvana. Um, you have massive domination in the popular music market with people like Michael Jackson, who's technically a baby boomer, Prince, right? In the rock area, you have Iron Maiden, Black Sabbath. These are These are baby boomers. Uh, you have now Ronnie James Dio is actually a silent generation. He was born in 1942, but most of the people in his band were baby boomers. Uh, so baby boomers were big, right? Toto is baby boomers. Rush is baby boomers. Yes, baby boomers. So the musicians that were baby boomers um, did a lot of exceptional things. And the reason that I think that there was so much diverse music being so popular uh, was the result of all of those factors that make baby boomers... Um, be who they are as regular people also created these exceptional individuals. That is an intersection of individualism and rebellion, but within the context of established traditions and norms. This is definitely the case in music. That is to say, we look at something like maybe Black Sabbath. They're developing out of the rock and roll and blues tradition. They're using more or less traditional harmonies, traditional song structures, but they're doing something really unique with their aesthetic, with their sound, with the way that they approach their subject matter. So it's kind of a same but different category. Whereas before that, you tend to hear a lot of the same stuff. When you hear doo-wop, it's like all the bands sound the same. And Ronnie James Dio actually did doo-wop with Ronnie Dio and the Prophets. Fun, fun, fun thing to go and listen to. But you, you get this idea like, Everything was the same and there wasn't a whole lot of innovation. After the 60s, you get a ton of innovation in popular music, a ton of variety that comes out starting in the 1970s. Black Sabbath is an example. Uh, you have bands like Yes, which uh, were always pushing the envelope on, on what rock music meant. Like, what can we take within the context of rock music and how far can we push it? Frank Zappa, what can we take in the context of rock music and how far can we push it? How weird can we get while it's still being rock? And even at the edges of that, you have stuff like uh, Glenn Branca, Sonic Youth. You have Velvet Underground. You have bands like that that are, are kind of way on the outside and really pushing the boundaries of that. This is different, however. I want to point out that this sort of rebellion and unique approach to it, it's within the confines of things that we're already familiar with, which is a bunch of rock, uh, you know, tropes, cliches. The rock and roll format remained, but they did a lot of variety within that format. And that's what people think of as innovative. If you were to look at stuff that's happening in, in academic music at the time, something like you know, uh, Morton Sabotnik or Milton Babbitt, right? You'd hear stuff that was so, for a lot of you would probably be un unlistenable. Same thing with the first part of the 20th century is that art music like Stravinsky and Schoenberg and Webern and uh, composers like that were not only pushing the envelope of what came before them, they were just creating new aesthetics 
almost out of whole cloth. Arnold Schoenberg is like, I have this 12 tone technique that just, the whole point is to obliterate tonality. Um, now I am actually a fan of Arnold Schoenberg. Maybe you guys aren't, but it's way more advanced. It's way more rebellious. It's much more innovative than anything baby boomers did in popular music. But we're talking about the popular frame and within the popular frame, that's why it was so popular is that they were able to take things which were already established and people were familiar with and we know worked and do new innovative um, variations on those to sell lots of records, to be very popular. The, the era of the rock star really begins with the baby boomers as consumers in the 60s and then ends with them being retired kind of wild to think about there. So, so this, the other interaction is them as a consumer group created this, them as a consumer group going away and retiring and not buying this stuff decreases it. And you look at the most popular touring acts, the biggest grossing tour acts, touring acts, they're, they're acts that baby boomers listen to. It's like Eagles and Rolling Stones. That's, that's who makes all the money touring. Maybe Metallica makes a lot of money touring too. Uh, but they, I mean, they, I th- consider them more like Generation Jones. They were born in the 60s um, versus like Iron Maiden. You're getting now into the 50s. And so you're you're into the baby boomer territory. They make a lot of money, right? So it's these bands that are either are baby boomers or are mostly baby boomers and are associated with baby boomers as consumers that continue to make all of this money. So the good boomers, we had really exceptional artists that produced music that everybody loved. That was something else. Now you have this in other things as well, right? You have this crossover between kind of individualism and rebellion and and thinking outside the box and outside the system, yet still kind of in the system with uh, things like Apple Computer, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak being uh, very innovative thinkers Steve Jobs says, oh, I, I dropped out and then I dropped in, like I, I audited classes. So he didn't completely abandon the university system, but he was not trying to pursue a degree so much as start a business and do in, new and innovative things. Steve Wozniak is, of course, like a genius level inventor. He also created the universal remote for all of you, uh, for all of your pleasure besides inventing the Apple computer and putting the first sound chip in a personal computer, as far as I know, just so he could play a breakout game. Uh, <laughs> That's that's the legend, anyways. So a lot of the uh, a lot of the early tech moguls are baby boomers because they were thinking innovatively. They were thinking directionally with what came before, but innovating on that in some new and unexpected ways. Pushing the personal computer. The idea of the personal computer is very aspirational, and it has its roots going way back into like the 1970s. Uh, and then we are able to reap all the results of that now. So. Uh, very exceptional individuals that came out of the baby boomers in the engineering area as well as in the artistic area. Same thing with movie makers. You have many auteur uh, filmmakers who come out of the out of the baby boomer generation, like uh, Steven Spielberg and uh, George Lucas. I think are both earlier uh, earlier baby boomers. Uh, so they're able to be a little bit rebellious, but what do they make? They make something that's really, 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 really popular. Uh, Star Wars, as a takeoff on something like Flash Gordon, is able to take that roots and mix it up and do new and innovative things and like pushing the envelope with uh, special effects and produce the blockbuster. The blockbuster is a baby boomer invention, just like how the rock star is, as we think of it now like the sex, drugs, and rock and roll thing. That's really a baby boomer invention, and so is the blockbuster. And so it's also interesting to see that the decline of the blockbuster also goes right along with the retirement of the baby boomers. Both the retirement of them as directors, as artists, but also their retirement kind of as consumers, where they're not they're not going to the movies as much as they did when they were young. They're not bringing their families to the to the movies. This was a regular thing. We went to the movies as a family, like every other week or maybe every every week sometimes, and we rented movies all the time. Our family was really into movies, and that I think is declined as everybody goes off into their own stream and is looking at their own things. Um, it's harder and harder to make a blockbuster. It has to be a bigger and bigger event. Whereas it felt like new good movies are coming out every single week back in like 1995. Um, So as the baby boomers have declined, so has the blockbuster. So what did the baby boomers produce both artistically and technically? They produced that which is popular. They produced popular form, Uh, whether it was popular music or the blockbuster movie or the personal computer. These are aspirational 
um, inventions of the baby boomers and with their decline goes the decline of those things in our culture. Uh, fewer exceptional individuals maybe, though the exceptional individuals that exist in the next generations are just maybe a little bit fewer and far further between and as well as the demographic is not a unified demographic the way the baby boomers were where they were all uh they were all pretty similar thinking and buying similar stuff and that makes for a blockbuster movie now we're kind of all granulated super hyper individuals into our micro niche you know maybe you're the guy who listens to only scandinavian death metal and that's your thing and that's cool it's great that that exists for you but that's not ever going to be popular not the way that like yes was or uh, michael jackson or prince or any of this stuff so have a great one leave me your thoughts down below about the good bo baby boomers who were the good baby boomers um i think a lot of the things now i the last thing i'll say is that a lot of the negatives that happen also happen with these exceptional individuals right there's uh problems with them being parents they can't maintain a marriage they have all the same baby boomer problems but they just happen to be uh, really kind of exceptional individuals because of some of the things that cause those problems. Like they're, the difficulty having uh, personal relationships is because they're so self-obsessed with their career that they produce great things. You know what I mean? So leave me your thoughts down below and I'll see you all next time. Don't forget to join my Patreon. It is linked down below. You get a free book every month as well as uh, free access to the books that I write live on the air. So you get uh, transcripts for all of the live writes. So have a great one and I'll see you all next time.